If you want to be sure how to fill in these gaps in nuclear interactions, then you're in the right place. In my experience, issues with answering these questions come down to how well do you know the properties of the particles? And that's the subject for this video. Betty here can be described in many different ways. For example, she is a canine or a mammal or an omnivore or even a German miniature schnauzer. In the same way, particles, of which there are many, many more than you previously thought, can be divided into lots of different groups. There's a whole different ways to classify these particles. And in your school physics, there's a very definite, simplified set that you need to know about. So first of all then, the most fundamental, haha, see what I did there, the most basic way to break these particles apart is to decide if they are fundamental or not fundamental. A fundamental particle cannot be broken down into anything. We'll meet some more of them in a minute, but fundamentally they are the leptons. On the other hand, the hadrons forming the other branch to our tree are not fundamental and can clearly be broken down into other particles. So for example, they're all made up of quarks. Now this means that if they're made of quarks, they all experience the strong force, whereas the leptons just travel past oblivious to the strong force. Back to the hadrons. Now the hadrons can be broken down in lots of different ways, but for us, the easiest way to break them down is to consider the number of quarks that they've got. So we will have a branch with three quarks and a branch with two quarks. The branch with three quarks are known as baryons and given the number B equals one or minus one if it's an antiparticle. So particles with three quarks are hadrons, they're baryons. These are more or less the particles that you are now familiar with, the proton, the neutron, as long as they're antiparticles. But there are also lots of others like the sigma and the lambda, which you're not really going to meet, although they could get chucked into a question as a curveball, I suppose. Those particles that are made up of two quarks are known as mesons, and they are given a baryon number of zero. Now, a meson is always made up of a quark and an antiquark pair. And there are well over a hundred of them, or at least there were when I was at university. And you only have to know about a few of them. Basically, that's going to be the kaons and the pions. In nuclear equations, such as the one we looked at earlier, you have to balance these numbers. So the baryon number on one side of an equation has to be the same as it does on the other. Just like what you're used to doing with charges. Charge is conserved, so is baryon number. The other side of the tree then is the fundamental particles. And these are ones which cannot be broken up. Although interestingly, there was a sniff on the internet a couple of years back of a group of physicists who claimed to have discovered some structure with inside the electron. And if there is structure in there, that might mean that it's made up of something more fundamental. Although that bit of research has gone quite quiet. I haven't heard much about that over recent months, but I bet there's something in there. Anyway, for now, they're fundamental. And there are basically four that we need to know about, or six, depending which course you're doing. So for example, we start off with the electron, and then we have the muon. Now the electron, as you know, is a small negative particle. The muon is also a small negative particle, but it's some 200 times heavier than the electron. Both of them have a charge of minus one, and they're given Different, different lepton numbers. So the electron has a lepton electron number of one and the muon has a lepton muon number of plus one. Along with the electrons are the particles and neutrinos, sometimes known as the ghost particles because they are, the amount of mass they have seems to be very, very small. There are an awful lot of neutrinos and they're very hard to detect. And again, they come in lots of varieties. We need to know about the electron neutrino which generally hangs out with an electron or its antiparticle. And you need to know about the muon neutrino. And guess what that hangs out with? It's the muon, of course. And also the tau neutrino, if you're one of the odd balls that does head Excel. It's really worth getting to grips with your formula sheets on this, because for example, if you're an AQA student, you're really lucky because most of this information is given to you here in the tables. And it's the using of these numbers, the baryon numbers, the lepton numbers, that are really gonna help you to fill in those pesky gaps. Our first example then of how to use these numbers 
is looking at a anti-electron neutrino interacting with a proton to create a positron and a mystery particle. So let's go through the numbers. So baryon number first. Well, a neutrino has a baryon number of zero, a proton is plus one, a positron is zero. That means our mystery particle must be plus one because it has to balance both sides of the dividing line. Taking the charge then, well, all the neutrinos have no charge. Proton again is plus one. Positron is also plus one, which means our mystery particle is a zero. We now have enough information to identify this mystery particle. We know it's a baryon, so it's made of three quarks. That's not a meson, but a baryon. And we also know that it's neutral. And the only one we know of those, of course, is our friend the neutron. So that's a neutron. In this second example, we have a pi plus or a pion, uh, which is decaying into a something and an electron neutrino. So let's go through the numbers. Well, the baryon number is zero for any meson, and it's also zero for our neutrinos, which means it must be zero for our mystery particle. The charge on the pi plus is plus one. The charge on the neutrino is zero, so the charge on our mystery particle must be plus one. So let's take a look at the lepton numbers then. Uh, well, a meson has a lepton number of zero, and a electron neutrino, finding that on the table there, you'll see it has a plus one lepton number. So in order to balance it, x must be minus one. So that means it's one of these four from the a formula sheet there. Well, it's not going to be an um, it's not going to be another neutrino, so we can scrub those out. And it'd be very unusual to get a, a electron neutrino with a muon. In fact, I'm not even sure if that happens. Therefore, particle x must be a positron. For this example, you might feel happier if you know a little bit more about the structure of mesons. I'm not sure that it's necessary, but if you do, I've got a great video on it just here. In our last example, then, we have to find the particles x and y. And as you can see, this is a multiple choice question from one of the papers. So let's go through the baryon numbers first. Well, the baryon number for a kaon, zero, because it's a meson. We don't know what it is for x and y. But we know that a neutrino is not a baryon, so that's a zero. Looking at the charges, well, kaon has got no charge, and the electron neutrino, or anti-electron neutrino, has no charge either. Again, we don't know about x and y. Looking at the lepton numbers, well, the, the meson there is not a lepton, and the anti-neutrino, well, that certainly is a, a lepton, so that's going to have a lepton number of minus one. Now, we know, let's think of the lepton numbers first then, because, well, it's the only one that anything's happening in, really, isn't it? We know then that y and x must, all together between them, have a lepton number of plus one, so that we have zero on the right-hand side. So let's just say that particle x has no lepton number, and particle y has a lepton number of plus one. Well, we're probably in enough now to work out what particle y is. We know it's going to be in this column of the leptons. We know it's not going to be a neutrino because guess what? We've already got one. And it's not going to be a muon because the, new fla the flavor of neutrino we have is electron. Therefore, Y is going to be equal to an electron. So from our answers, that rules out D. Well, that's a good start. So let's just uh, complete y, Y's column. So we know it has a baryon number of zero and we know it has a charge of minus one. Okay, so that tells us a few things then about X. So let's fill in the column for x, and uh, we can see that x must have a baryon number of zero, but it must have a charge of plus one. So, and a lepton number of zero. So it's not a lepton, which means that it can't be a positron, and it can't be a muon, which really only leaves a pi. So let's just see if the pi meson works. Well, a pi meson is not a baryon. It has a charge of plus one, because it's got a plus one there, and it's not a lepton. So yeah, uh, that means that x is in fact, from our table, a pi plus. Now, it could be other things as well, but you have to choose one of these answers, don't you? So for us, it's going to be a pi plus. Well, I hope that was useful for you.